So with that, I'm going to pass over to Jason Rhodes uh, from Intuit to talk about something that came up a few times today, which is unit cost and how do we start to drive down unit cost, even though our total cloud spend might be going up and attach that spend against the business value that's going. Jason, are you there? I'm here. Thanks, JR. Awesome. All right. Yeah, let's uh, let's move forward. And just for those of you that may not uh, know me or heard of me, I, I, I've uh, been into it, uh, sort of leading the the FinOps uh, space there, and been basically 100% focused on FinOps there for over five years now. So, lots of lots of battle scars to show from uh, the early days till now. So. All right. So, yeah, I, I know, you know, uh, with the group here that some of you may be sort of in the crawl uh, phase, some walk and some run around unit costs. And so hopefully there's some things here that we can share that can be helpful to, you know, to you, regardless of sort of where you are in your journey and, uh, you know, the experience level that you have uh, with unit costs. So we're going through uh, what they are and why you uh, would seek to sort of uh, build and manage and maintain unit costs uh, within your business. And then sort of uh, on, and the, how to make it work and some tricks and some lessons. Uh, we'll be splitting it uh, between uh, things you can do in your, with, in your business, but not necessarily in your cloud at all, uh, to sort of facilitate unit cost measurement. And then uh, secondly, things you can do with inside your cloud to help make sure that it's, it's sort of ready and uh, compatible with what you've done in your business so that um, you can get to a unit cost. It's, unit cost is very much about marrying things that are happening inside your cloud with things that are happening inside your business to, to, to pro, you know, provide that sort of composite picture, uh, you know, to, to help you know where things are going. So let's uh, move forward here, JR. We got a lot of quick hit slides here. So for us in FinOps, you know, a unit cost is the cloud hosting cost incurred in producing and delivering some unit of value. And so again, lots of different types of, of organizations and enterprises here. So uh, in some cases that might be something uh, you know, sort of re revenue focused, you know, cost per customer, cost per dollar revenue, something like that. If you're, I mean, there's certainly nonprofits who might measure their success levels in other ways, um, but a unit could be anything and it can be something very macro level. So again, um, something like a cost per customer metric, it might, it, 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 a simple way to go about that might be to say, well, let's take the entirety of our cloud costs as the numerator on top and let's take the entirety of our customers, every customer we have as the denominator on the bottom. And that's a, that's a very simple sort of, uh, you know, might be your first foray into unit costs would be to take these really simple sort of macro uh, things where you can take all of your cloud and divide it by all of something that you measure in your business. Uh, as, as you get more advanced though, you might wanna start to, to hone in and focus and subset things. And we'll talk about that. Um, but it doesn't also necessarily have to be something totally business focused. Uh, for us, like in our in our own FinOps program, we measure the success of a lot of what we do using unit costs. Um, so uh, things that we do through managing, you know, reserved instances and savings plans, those should drive down the unit costs of, of cores and RAM and, you know, the, basically the various costs of different instances and things that people are using. And so we can measure the cost of those units, the, the basically the rates, uh, as a unit cost to measure the success of our own program. So again, it doesn't always have to be something that's uh, a really high level kind of uh, measurement that would maybe only be consumed by your executive suite. It can be, unit costs can be measured uh, to you know, help track uh, discrete programs or even um, individual projects to see you know, if the, the return on a project is as expected. Um, so let's, uh, let's move forward here, Jaron. Right, and so one of the, the main value points is that unit costs provide clarity to your efficiency and your effectiveness through changes. So change is a constant in everything that we do. And even if, even if your business happened to be completely, uh, you know, stagnant, you know, period over period, you can rest assured that the cloud is changing tremendously every day, you know, regardless of uh, which, which one you're using. So uh, it allows you to maintain sort of a, a clear lens over your efficiency as things uh, are, are moving. Um, and so again, like a healthy trend might be that your business is quadrupled and your costs have gone up 50%. So seeing your costs go up 50% might be concerning, but when you, when you see that in the context of your business having quadrupled, um, 
you know, okay, well, maybe, maybe that's okay. Maybe, especially if a lot of your, the way that you deliver for your customers is through the cloud, maybe you're okay with that. Um, but at the same time, seeing your cost triple with your business doubling, business doubling is great, but cost tripling is not great. And if you, maybe if cloud isn't a big part of your spend, that's okay for in the short term, but that sort of trend extrapolated out over a long period of time is very unhealthy and would require some corrective action. So again, it, it just allows you to contextualize your, your hosting spend um, through any kind of change that's happening. And again, that can be a technology change or a business change. And let's uh, move forward here. So again, just, you know, there's no one best set of units to measure. I mean, it may be the case that at some point, maybe the foundation will have sort of a checklist of, you know, these are the five unit costs everybody should be tracking. Um, but there really isn't, in my mind anyway, any one best set of things that everybody should be measuring. You've really got to know your business and, and to know what's important to them. Um, and really, if you haven't started on this, this part of your journey yet, it starts by just understanding, well, what is important, you know, to, to my business where I am and where, that would be helpful to, to be able to look at it, uh, you know, in terms of, of hosting unit costs. So let's, uh, we'll get into that next. So uh, aligning your business. So th this is often the harder part. I mean, most of these things cloud related, we think of them as often big technical challenges, but um, just like getting FinOps adopted and some of these other things, uh, just aligning and, and sort of, uh, you know, getting the ducks in a row, so to speak, within the business can be the harder part of this. Um, so what I found and what I, I think that, uh, especially in a larger group that you should expect to have to do to get to a place to where you know which unit costs uh, are the best candidates and can provide the most value is, is to engage with, you know, different leaders, different folks uh, across the company to understand sort of what their pains are as relates to hosting costs um, and where a unit cost would help them, uh, you know, just better manage their business and make better decisions. And a really good place to start would be to look at where you maybe have uh, existing KPIs and metrics. Um, so if, if you're, you know, if you're a sales organization or marketing organization, different product organizations may already have established, established metrics and KPIs that they're using to track, you know, maybe that's just some, like revenue growth, customer growth, um, but it could be, it could be other uh, more sort of specific or nuanced metrics that that group is managing. And if, if those, uh, if the growth or decline in those metrics, have a good correlation to cloud spend. So again, uh, something like concurrent users or transactions per second, those sorts of things will tend to have really good correlation to your hosting spend because to, to grow those things generally means that your cloud will have to scale up uh, to support it. So um, that's, a, that's a great place to start, uh, again, in, in getting your first uh, unit costs established. And if we move forward here. Uh, an important thing uh, to, to, you know, that with unit costs that, that it is a big part of the challenge as you, as you've sort of gotten along, it's, it's, it can be really fun, you know, when you, you first put one together and you show people and it gets people excited, but an important thing is continuity. If you're not able to continue to calculate that metric, you know, month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year in a consistent fashion, it's going to sort of decay the value of that metric to folks, you know, in making their decisions and, and steering the ship. So uh, it's important that you have the processes in place. And I, I use, you know, lifecycle management as, as a big part of that to ensure that as your business changes, as the cloud changes, that your unit cost continues to be a true representation of, of what it originally meant to be. Um, and so, you know, this is just an example here, but, um, you know, if, when you're creating new cloud assets, it's important that if if that asset is in some way part of a unit cost, that it it be it be mapped to you know the business side of things at when it's when it's born when it's created, so that right away any spend that it's generating uh, becomes part of you know anything on the business side that um, in that in that unit cost calculation that it's included immediately. Right? If you've got some, oh, we've got to wait for our quarterly data cleanup exercise before, you know, we, we get those things mapped the right way, then that means that, you know, in that whole period of time where you've got sort of this data problem, your unit cost is going to be off track. And so if that's, again, if there's been a reorg or a shuffle or a, a merger or something, 
uh, it's just important that you have the life cycle and, and sort of change management processes in place so that your unit cost remains true and accurate. And one of the things I'll say here is it's almost easier to make a change uh, in what I'll call a business database, but this might be uh, a CMDB. Uh, I heard of, someone else mentioned, uh, you know, a metadata, central metadata repository, these sorts of things. Um, what you don't want to do is, is be asking your, your army of developers, whether it's you have 10 developers at your company or 10,000 to have to go change how they've tagged things or how they've labeled things or, you know, make basically technical changes as your business changes or as the cloud changes. Uh, you want to structure things in a way that, um, you know, your, your, your tagging structure can absorb, you know, all of the likely change that's going to occur in your business. So like if a department changes names, people shouldn't have to go change all of their tags to reflect that that department name change, right? There should be use of immutable tags and keys and things um, so that those those things like name changes get absorbed transparently and we can move forward. Um, the other thing is, especially if you've got, you know, like Intuit's a really big company. We have got over 10,000 employees. So, uh, but again, this whether you're much larger than us or a lot smaller, you shouldn't expect everybody at your company to, to sort of get there at the same time. Um, what I found works really well uh, is to provide for a maturity path. So like for us, uh, you know, some of our groups are, are much further along in their, their sort of uh, journey than, than others. And so they're heavy consumers of unit costs, um, but others not so much. And so, you know, you don't, you know, it's rare that we're in a position to compel groups to to go do something. So uh, what I find works really well is just help um, the groups that have been successful evangelize that across your company. Uh, when when one group sees that another is is better able to to run their business because of an investment they've made, again, whether that's in tagging or in just sort of better business metadata management, that they're able to to make quicker and better decisions around uh, how they're running their business. There's I don't want to call it jealousy, but there's sort of a, uh, you know, the competitive nature and like, hey, I want to have that too. And so that's a really great way of uh, sort of culturally uh, fostering um, that, that, that maturity and that sort of desire to advance across your enterprises to share those wins as the sort of trailblazing groups uh, get going forward. So I've got only another minute left here, so we'll, we'll jam through this. Um, Tagging is only part of things, especially in a great Kubernetes conversation earlier. Uh, a lot of the, the thinking early on was that, you know, tags was the way that you got, you could get there, but don't necessarily constrain yourself to tags. You can uh, sometimes consider large groups or small groups of accounts, certainly uh, resource level things with tags. But as you get into Kubernetes, now I've got a, now I need to know the cost of my namespaces uh, to maybe certain, you know, certain namespaces should be included in this unit cost and others shouldn't be. Um, so, uh, think of the cloud as a hierarchy of grains where you can uh, encapsulate uh, in different scopes of things, you know, into your different unit costs and just allow for flexibility in that as you go. And we can move forward here, Jerem. Um, yeah, and again, some greater granularity and completeness of attribution are, are, are signs of increasing maturity. So what, you know, what I found works really well is again, just start off with really coarse grained high level macro metrics and as groups evolve and as, as you help them evolve to, to do things more precisely, that's where you, you really start to, you can drill down, get out the microscope and start, you know, tagging individual resources and groups of resources and breaking apart, you know, shared multi-tenant costs uh, to provide much more sort of micro, uh, small level uh, unit cost type data. And I think that we got one more and that's it. Yeah. Um, the last thing here too that we found works really well is you know, you're in FinOps, you may not be blazing the trail of, of how you sort of enforce company-wide tagging and things. You, you may have security or compliance uh, type initiatives that, that got there first, uh, depend, again, depending on what's important to your company. So, uh, you know, you can piggyback on patterns that they've established for doing things like tag enforcement or lifecycle management around the business side of things. Um, so, you know, don't, hopefully you're not having to blaze the trail for FinOps. So, you know, look look to where those groups have have done that for you, and and take advantage of, of those their investments uh, in your space if you can. And that's all I got. Cool, thank you, Jason. We're we're doing a breakout here, so if you have more questions for Jason, he has a bunch more content. And I, I can't stress the importance of this whole area enough. Like we 
we started in the book, like start with unit cost in mind and in there, like start this conversation early because otherwise you're going to have that chat about, I'm sure you all have about, we're spending too much. And it's like, well, are we spending too much or are we spending the right amount? And this type of business data will get us there. 